Okay, we're back. So the last where we left off was that we calculated the distance of the purple line. And this essentially is the, when Prudhvi and Adam are closest to each other. Let's continue on the next page. Well, we take the distance formula, and what we do is set the derivative equal to zero to find the minimum. Remember that a minimum or a maximum means that the derivative is equal to zero, and that's the point at where um, the velocity is equal to zero, the object is at rest for that moment. In this case, this is the distance formula. Set the derivative equal to zero and calculate the derivative. To calculate the derivative, it essentially is basically when you look at x to the power of one half, the derivative of that is one half x to the negative a half, which tends to be one over two times the root. So the original root. So I have two times the original root as the bottom, and for the top, I have the derivative of the numerator of the sorry inside the root sign. So I'm taking the derivative of this part right here. The derivative of that is, bring the 2 down, 2 times negative 50 times 75 minus 50x to the power of 1 plus uh, 2 times 60, which is 120, times 60x to the power of 1. Once you do that, you then expand it collect like terms, common factors. So what I did here is looking up here at the top, I can divide out 100. From here I can divide out 100 here, and I can divide out 100 here. That will give us 100 times negative 75 plus 50x plus 72x all over the bottom. All right, when we do that, we can collect like terms, and we get this over the bottom. Now, why is there 50 there when it was originally 100? Well, if you look carefully, folks, 100 divided by 2 is just 50. So that's where that came from, and this got simplified to give you 122x minus 75. So that means we're looking only when the numerator equals 0, and that means that it's 75 over 122. That is the value of x. So what does that mean in terms of minutes? It means it's about 37 minutes because you take 75 divided by 122 and times it by 60 to determine the nearest minute. And then you can say at 1.37 p.m. Prudhvi and Adam are closest to each other. All right, next question. Example number five. So we're looking at this word problem, and it's about Zamar and some, and uh, he wants to raise money for charity. Okay, and what we need to do is find out what ticket price would maximize the revenue. What will have a maximum revenue in this situation? Well, in order to, when you have sell tickets, in order to have revenue, you have to take the price times the number of tickets you sell. So we're going to let X represent the number of $1 in raises or increases. And the reason why we let it X represent that is we don't know how many $1 increases we're going to have. Well, the revenue is going to be 11, which is the price of the tickets right now, plus 1X. So 11 plus $1 increases, so that's what's a $1 increase. And for every increase, you're going to have a decrease in number of ticket sales. So we originally sold 400, and we subtract 20x. So every time you increase, you're going to lose 20 people. All right, once we do that, that is going to be our equation. We take this equation, and we set the derivative equal to 0. And we can expand it to make it a little bit easier to find the derivative. Set the derivative equal to zero. And that's going to equal 
negative 40x plus 180, so negative 40x, that would be this derivative right here, plus 180, so that's that part right here, equals 0. Isolate for x, and you get x is equal to 4.5. Now, can this number actually be 4.5? Well, when you think about it, I could have 4.5 increases, so that's $4.50 here, and can I lose four and a half twenties? Well, of course, four and a half twenties means that you're going to lose 90 people. So the ticket price is going to be 11 plus one times four and a half is equal to 1550, and that will be your ticket price. So therefore, the ticket price should be $15.50 to maximize revenue. All right, next question. Example number six, a right circular cylinder has to be designed to fit inside a sphere of four meter diameter so that each of the top and bottom touches the sphere along its complete circular edge. What are the dimensions of the cylinder of maximum volume and what is the maximum volume? So we have a sphere as you can see here all right, so there's our sphere, looking at it like a cut crosswise when we're looking at it. And inside there is going to be a right circular cylinder. So if we were to cut a right circular cylinder crosswise, it would potentially just look like a rectangle. Okay, and there's a circle at the top and a circle on the bottom, but we know that the edges touch the sphere. We also know that because the edges touch the sphere, the diagonal edge of the right circular cylinder is going to be equal to 4 meters. And that's that dotted line there, folks. The volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. Now, where did this h and 2 come from? Well, we know, for example, that this is going to be the height. We also know that this entire thing is 2 times r. 2r, so this whole thing is 2 times r, the radius of the cylinder. Not the radius of the whole entire sphere, folks, but the radius of the cylinder. That's known as 2r. We also know that the diagonal edge from edge to edge of the right cylinder is going to be 4, because that is equal to the diameter of the sphere, which is given inside here. So what we need to do now is set up the Pythagorean Theorem. Pythagorean Theorem says the sum of the squares of the legs, so 2r squared plus h squared is equal to 16. We expand that, you get uh, 4r squared plus h squared equals 16. We're going to isolate for r squared so that we could substitute that uh, value in here. So r squared is equal to 16 minus h squared all over well, don't forget it was 2 squared divided by 4. So the volume of the cylinder is now equal to 16 minus h squared over 4 times h times pi. And that is our new formula. And our variable, there's only one variable, and that is h. So we're going to take the derivative of v with respect to h. But before we do that, look what happened here. From here to here, what I did is I expanded this. I expanded it by taking 16 divided by 4, which is 4, times h. And I expanded this by saying it's negative h cubed over 4, all times by pi. Pi being a constant number. It's like a factor. Then you take the derivative. You set v prime equal to 0. You get 4 minus 3h squared over 4, all times pi. Does pi affect our question? No, it doesn't. We're solving for when 4 minus, so when the bracket is equal to 0. And we get 3h squared is equal to 16. h squared is equal to 16 over 3. h is equal to plus or minus 4 root 3 over 3. Well, we can't have a minus, folks, so we're only going to look at the plus. When we do that, we then get r squared is equal to 16 minus h squared over 4. Remember that we had that originally. And we substitute h for 16 over 3, sorry, h squared for 16 over 3, 
and we get 16 minus 16 over 3 over, divided by 4 which means r squared is equal to 8 over 3 which means that r is equal to 2 root 2 over root 3. We take the square root. Don't forget we only need the positive so we can't, ra let's rationalize the denominator, you'll get 2 root 6 over 3. Once we calculate that, we can calculate the volume. So plugging in 4 uh, pi r squared, which is h 8 over 3, times h, which is 4 root 3 over 3, we get a volume of 32 root 3 over 9 times pi, which is approximately 19.3472 units cubed. In this case we're looking at it being meters, so the answer to this is going to be meters cubed. So the dimensions are uh, maximum volume is 19.3472 meters cubed and the different dimensions you can calculate the decimal values yourselves. Alright folks, that's the end of this video. Take care, good luck on your test.